everybody, my name is Tyler Lay, and in this video, we're gonna talk about an engineering failure, the I-35W bridge collapse. We're gonna cover why did the bridge collapse and what could have been done to avoid it. The I-35W bridge was built in 1967. It was an underslung steel truss bridge. On an August 1st, 2007, at 6.01 p.m., the bridge collapsed. 13 people died and 145 were injured. This was discussed in the media for months. How could a country like the United States, one of the richest countries in the world, have something this awful happen to it? Don't they take care of their infrastructure? So why did the bridge collapse? Was it too old? You know, it happened to be 50 years old. The orange line here happens to be the age of the I-35W bridge when it collapsed. This means that 20% or one in five bridges was older than the I-35W bridge when it went down. So it's not about the bridge being too old. So was the failure caused by deterioration? The I-35W bridge had been inspected and got a very poor rating, actually a 50 out of 100. That is an F. That is a horrible rating. And that put it in a category called structurally deficient bridges. What does that mean? Structurally deficient bridges are a bridge that receives a poor inspection rating. That's all they mean. They're bridges that need repair. It does not mean the bridge is unsafe. Engineers do not allow the traveling public to be on bridges that are unsafe. The I-35W bridge had been rated structurally deficient for over 15 years. It had an F for over 15 years but the bridge was inspected regularly and it was stable. It wasn't really getting worse. So was it built correctly? And the answer is not really. To explain this, we have to understand the bridge. If we look at the truss, we're gonna take out one part of the truss and look at it on the screen in two dimensions. The place where all of these members come together is called the joint. The joints are a critical part of a bridge. If you've ever made a popsicle stick bridge, here's a secret for you. The joints are where it fails. You need to make the joints strong. That is also true in bridges we built that hold cards and trucks. We usually use on trusses something called a gusset plate. This is a big, thick piece of steel that helps transfer the load from one member to another. The load can move through the plate. And unfortunately, the gusset plates on the bridge were under designed. They were off by about a factor of two. They're about a half inch thick. They needed to be about an inch thick, but the bridge had been in service for over 50 years. Hadn't collapsed. What else is going on? Folks in 2004 started to notice that one of these nodes was actually not like the others trying to show in this picture these orange lines which are straight and these other lines which are bent. Notice straight, bent. If you learn one thing is that when a structure starts to bend and buckle, it's giving you warning that there's a problem. It's giving you warning that it's not very comfortable and it needs some help. And this was already happening at node U10. Notice where node U10 is shown. Let's watch closely to the area below node U10 and the area in the bridge deck right above node U10. You can see right off the bat, the bridge starts to fall. And as it starts to fall, this part is straight, this part is straight, this part is straight, but look at the bending that's happening. Look at the bending or buckling of that bottom member. Look at the distortion that's happening in the bridge deck. And watch, as it goes, it's just gonna get worse. Look at all of that bending. It's happening right in one spot. And all this other region is straight. What's going on? It looks like something failed right at node U10. Let's watch that again, because there's one more key detail that you need to catch. As the bridge is collapsing, I want you to look on top, right here. What is all of that stuff? What is all of that debris? Why are there things on the bridge? Let's notice as we keep going, it's hitting the river here and the water is coming up, but look here, look here. 
We have dust clouds coming up. There's some kind of debris on the bridge. This picture was taken two hours and 15 minutes before the bridge collapsed. And as you notice, they were doing construction work on the bridge. And they had in this region of 12 foot by 115 foot, the estimates are that 580,000 pounds were placed in this 12 foot by 115 foot area. Well, a Toyota Corolla, that's a pretty typical sedan. It weighs about 2,000 pounds, at least the old ones. That means that same amount of weight is equal to 290 Toyota Corollas. That's a lot. And if I was gonna stack those 290 Toyota Corollas, I could actually fit on the 115 foot dimension, I could fit seven of them on the ground. But then to get the rest of them, I'd have to stack them up about 40 cars high. This is four times the design load. So why did the bridge collapse? The gusset plate at U10 was under design. That is true. But 580,000 pounds were placed on the bridge in a very small area. This shouldn't have happened. How could you avoid this? Number one, we need to prioritize the repair of our bridges. We need to make it a point to fix these things. When extreme events or overloads happen, we don't need these things failing. We need them to be strong. We need better communication. You will notice a trend in most engineering failures. It's because of poor communication. We need to have better communication between the inspectors, between the designers, and between the construction team. The inspectors need to be screaming about Node U10. The designers needed to put Node U10 on the plan set and remind people about it as much as they could. The contractors should have known that there was a weak spot on the bridge. So why don't we fix this? Number one, it's so easy to take bridges for granted. They've been around our entire life. They've been doing awesome. They're super strong. How we ever think they're going to fail? Everything needs repair. Everything needs maintenance. Bridges are no different. We don't want people to be inconvenienced by our repairs. We don't like to make people unhappy. We don't like people to complain. Engineers, we need to get over this. Traveling public, you need to be much more understanding. And finally, transportation spending is not a priority. How many more failures have to happen before we start to get serious about these things? Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this. Leave me a comment. Subscribe to my channel. I love doing this. I hope you love watching it. Take care, everybody. Bye.